What's up, wall fans, common sensors, social media world, podcast consumers, all of the things. Welcome to episode 70 of Go Tell It's the Wall podcast. I am, of course, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and I've got some awesome stuff for you tonight. We've got some somewhat serious, as serious as we get here at Go Tell It's the Wall, and, uh, and we're going to have some fun tonight. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. Grab yourself a nice drink, a beer, a cocktail, whatever it might be. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the not-so-soothing sounds of Go Tell to the Wall podcast for episode 70. So, let's get into it. Sensors, podcast consumers, welcome to episode 70 of Go Tell It to the Wall podcast. I'm your favorite, favorite, favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and I've got some fun stuff for you tonight. Some serious stuff, some fun stuff, lots and lots and lots of common sense. We've actually got some sports tonight. As usual, that's going to be socially relevant sporting news, so don't worry, those of you out there that really hate the sports and whatnot, uh, it, you're still going to find enjoyment in that segment. Uh, so stick around. for the, We do have the live feed going on. Stick around. I say st I'm say i so used to saying stick around to the live feed. You don't really have to stick around if you're only listening to the audio. We have this awesome thing called a pause button. You're able to pause it and come back to it whenever you want. Hopefully you're not already pausing. You know, because that would just be a bad sign. We're only like a minute into this thing that is episode 70. All right, so let's kick things off with our social plugs. That's right. You want to keep up with us between episodes, between videos, between me yelling at a wall. You can do so on Twitter. Follow us at Tell the Wall Pod. That's right, at Tell the Wall Pod. It's actually on the wall right behind me. Those of you that are seeing it on the live feed, it is backwards because Facebook is ridiculous. And they have not fixed that issue just yet. They fixed it. They just haven't fixed it for everyone. It's ridiculous. But nonetheless, you can follow us at Tell the Wall Pod. You can also follow my personal Twitter account, which is at Magic Muppet. That's right, at Magic Muppet. If you don't know why it's at Magic Muppet, don't bother asking me. I think it's been explained previously, and I sometimes get tired of explaining it. Most people know why it is Magic Muppet. So follow us there at Magic Muppet as well. You can, of course, still like our page. On Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Follow us there, like our page, check it out often, check back often, do the things. We we do post updates there. I don't want to say quite often, but somewhat often, and that's how that's a good way to keep up with us. Of course, our YouTube channel. That's right, the YouTube channel, that's extremely important as well, because you're gonna get content up there that you're not gonna find anywhere else. It does get shared to Facebook and Twitter and whatnot, but that's where a lot of the video content lives as YouTube, so head on over to YouTube.com, search Go Tell to the Wall. You don't need that podcast word. And in fact, I just changed the the name of our Facebook page. It started out as Go Tell to the Wall Podcast. It is now just Go Tell to the Wall. Uh, so search Go Tell to the Wall on YouTube, subscribe, like our videos, comment on the videos, get angry at the videos like many people have been doing lately. I think I upset a couple fan bases recently, <laughs> but you know what? I don't really care. I'm not trying to win a lot of favor here from people that are freaking out about, you know, stuff like common sense. Hmm. Yeah, not real worried about those fans. Uh, but even if you are one of those fans, please continue to subscribe and like and tell me how terrible the videos are and how wrong I am with everything. Uh, and of course, all-encompassing of those things I just mentioned would be SeanO'RourkeLive.com. That's right, www. You can tell I'm old because I like to use the www sometimes, but www.seanoworklive.com. Sean uh, that will actually take you to all of the things I just mentioned, as well as our Patreon page. Please, please, please head on over to Patreon, become a patron, support the show financially, uh, and our Indiegogo campaign, 
and of course there is some content up there that you're literally not going to find anywhere else. There's pictures, there's some blog posts, there's all kinds of other good stuff up there. Uh, so bookmark SeanWorkLive.com, check back often. That's going to keep you up to date on all your needed common sense. I know you just, just desire that common sense, especially between episodes and between videos and all that stuff. So that would be the place to do it, SeanWorkLive.com. Like I said, bookmark, check back often. Become a patron, become an Indiegogo supporter. Or don't do any of those things. Just, I don't know. You should, though. It's really cool. All the cool kids are doing it. That's what I should say. Uh, all right. Uh, before I get in, I, this should be in the TV section. But so I don't forget, I want to talk about this right at the top of the podcast. And I've talked about it before, but we are less than a week away. We This is happening on Tuesday, September 11th. I believe that's Tuesday. It's happening on September 11th. That would be the new episode of America's Got Talent. That's right. We've talked about America's Got Talent before, not because I'm a huge fan per se, but because we have some very, very, very good friends performing on America's Got Talent with a little group called Angel City Corral. They are going to be performing once again on September 11th. So if you are a listener, if you are a fan of the show, even if you hate the show but you like good music, like good choirs, uh, make sure you tune in September 11th, 8 p.m. Uh, on, oh my gosh, NBC. NBC. I can never remember the networks. I just, I flipped through and I'm like, oh, there it is. I don't have cable, so it's easy for me. I'm like, here's my five channels. Oh, it's this one. Uh, but it, it is NBC, actually. Uh, so, so tune in, NBC, 8 p.m., uh, 7 central, if you are in the central time zone. It is 7 central on Tuesday, September 11th. And make sure you watch watch the whole thing if you want but make sure you watch angel city corral and then afterward make sure you vote 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 it's very easy you just go on the website and you can you just like click a thing you don't even have to sign up for a bunch of stuff like they used to do uh i don't know if america's got talent specifically used to do that but i know, I know for a lot of voting and apps and, and that kind of stuff you had to like sign up they start bombarding you with emails they sell your email address ever you don't have to do that you just go on the website, you go on the app without like signing up for anything and you can vote like you can vote 10 times uh, for, for like you have 10 votes. So theoretically you could spread it out. But just give all 10 of those to Angel City Corral. They are going to be performing again next week. I'm super excited about it. We will be I'll be shouting it from the rooftops to make sure everyone is voting for Angel City Corral. And good luck to all of you. Is that good is that good luck or break a leg? I, it, you're right in the middle there. I, it's break a leg cuz they're performing. But it's a little bit of a good luck to it because of the voting. Uh, I don't know. I just make things up on the fly here. I'm, I don't know. That sounds good. Voting, good luck, uh, break a leg. Do all the things that you have to do to have an absolutely fantastic performance on September 11th. And like I said, make sure you're all voting. Vote, 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 vote for Angel City Corral next week so they can move on to the next round of America's Got Talent. Yeah. Support them. It's a good group of people. Support them. Oh, uh, beer this week. Oh, beer this week. I'm super excited about this. If you caught the teaser for this episode, you know that I'm super excited about it. And this is one of my absolute favorite breweries, Firestone Walker. We've had quite a few brews from them on our beer reviews and as well as on our uh, podcast episodes. And this particular one is Luponic Distortion, which is one of their IPA series. Luponic Distortion. I have a feeling we had the previous one on here I just, I can't remember offhand. 70 episodes, more than 70. We're at like 80 episodes total, if you count the all the specials and that kind of stuff, and I can't keep track of every single little beer in here as much as I would like to. Uh, so we might have had number 9 on here, but this would be number 10. So what Firestone Walker does for these Luponic Distortion Series beers is they're limited run, and they basically just count them off uh, as they go. So the, the last one out was obviously number 9, and they just recently released number 10. They are all IPAs, so if you're not an IPA fan, you might not like it, but I will say if you're not much of an IPA fan, you might be a fan of this one in particular, uh, which, I, like I said, is the number 10, but it has kind of a fruity flavor to it. It's fruit that is pulled from the hops, and in fact they say it has hints of mango creamsicle, peach ring, and ruby grapefruit. And one of my litmus tests that I always use for beers like this, and I'll tell you right now, if you're a fan of the show, you already know where I'm going with this. I actually had my wife try this one the other day, and she liked it. I don't know that she would order a bunch of them and drink them, but she enjoyed the Luponic Distortion number 10. 
And it's because of the fruit, the fruitiness that, that's that's pulled from the hops there. Uh, so if if you're kind of a casual IPA fan, you may enjoy this one. If you just absolutely hate them, I wouldn't you know go out of your way to try and find them. But it is a tasty one. It has that little bit of fruitiness to it. Not like the hazy IPAs that we've been seeing so much of, uh, but it does have a little fruit fruitiness to it that comes from the the particular hops they put in there. And this is number ten. You should be able to get this. I I I feel like this comes out nationwide. You can definitely get it all throughout California. Uh, we're able to get it here in Los Angeles. I'm seeing it every. I actually saw it at 7-Eleven the other day. It's not like you don't even need to go to your craft beer store. I saw it at 7-Eleven uh, and actually at Sprouts. It's all over the place. So pick some up, especially if you're an IPA fan. It's very tasty, very smooth. I'm enjoying it. That's why we have it on episode 70 of Go Tells the Wall podcast. Mm. I'm enjoying that one. Pick them up. Pick one up. Enjoy it. Enjoy the flavor. You know. Yeah. All right, let's get into some social media trends. Social media trends. Again, this one should probably go into television, but because it's trending on Twitter and all the social platforms right now, we're going to talk about it. That would be hashtag RIP Bandit. That's right. Unless you live under a rock or you have no connection whatsoever to the digital world, uh, you are probably well aware that today the great Burt Reynolds passed away at 82 years old. Burt Reynolds won't really... No matter, how, no matter how you feel subjectively about his personality and him as a person, or even his acting, you have to admit, damn good actor, uh, had a very, very successful decades-long acting career, and uh, unfortunately has passed away. Um, you know, fortunately, not too young. I, don't, I mean, 82 these days is a little young, but, uh, you know, he did get to live a fairly full life, <laughs> and he enjoyed life. We all know that for a fact. If you've seen anything having to do with Burt Reynolds, movies, his personal life, any of that kind of stuff, uh, you, you'll know that, uh, that he, he lived quite the life. Uh, so rest in peace, Burt Reynolds. It's sad to see a great actor pass away uh, like that. And uh, for me personally, I, I can't name a, a, a particular movie that I loved of his, uh, but I would say the reason that hashtag RIP Bandit is trending right now is because most people love Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, he was fantastic in that movie. It was a fantastic movie, and uh, that's why hashtag RIP Bandit is trending right now on Twitter. Uh, and people just, it's an outpouring of love for Burt Reynolds and, and people expressing how they feel about his films and, and kind of the way that uh, his acting may have touched their lives, which is one of those things you don't consider uh, until someone's gone. You don't realize how, how much of an impact someone that you don't actually personally know, but you've seen for so many years, for decades, many of us for decades. Uh, we've seen Burt Reynolds on screen, you know, you hear him on the radio, whatever else it is, and, and to, to just have someone leave us like that, pass away like that, it, it you don't realize how much it's going to affect you uh, until it actually happens. And and we've seen that from the outpouring of love, uh, really, from people all over the social platforms. And in fact, the next thing, the next trending thing uh, that I'm going to bring up is Mark Summers. I know, this sounds weird, and in fact, today I was looking through some of the social trends, that's what I do when I'm prepping for the show, and I was like, why is Mark Summers trending? Well, it turns out, and this was, I vaguely, vaguely, vaguely remember this from the 90s, but it turns out uh, that Burt Reynolds was on The Tonight Show, this is back in 1994, when Jay Leno was still hosting The Tonight Show, obviously, and Burt Reynolds was on there, and he was the first guest for that particular episode, and then Mark Summers was the next guest for that particular Tonight Show episode. And what happens, what happened is just raucously funny. Uh, it, you know, it, it's fun. It's funny because if you, if you come across this, you'll see a lot of headlines like Mark Summers and Mark Summers and Burt Reynolds almost came to blows. And it's like, well, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but it's just this raucously funny interaction between the two of them where Burt Reynolds like throws a cup of water on Mark Summers and Mark Summers tries to throw a cup of water on Burt Reynolds. He does not succeed. Uh, and then a few minutes later does succeed, and it ends with them throwing pies in each other's faces. Uh, so, highly encourage you to check that one out. It, it just shows Burt Reynolds' personality, and really his wit. That's what I had, re I had forgotten about Burt Reynolds, is because he, you know, and they're, they're joking, I'm sure this was all in fun. In the end, they probably went and had a drink backstage afterward. Uh, but, he, you know, they're going back and forth, and he's ribbing Mark Summers. And Mark Summers is trying to get back at him, you know, the way, you know, especially... This is how you talk to your friends, you know, you're giving them a hard time, you're teasing them, whatever, and it's not landing with Mark Summers, but Burt Reynolds is just like, bam, 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 bam. His wit was just next level, and it really is exemplified 
in that segment. You can find it. It's on YouTube. It's on Twitter. Like, just just go on Twitter, and you're going to see that uh, Mark Summers is trending. And if you were wondering why Mark Summers was trending, were you like, is it 1992? Or we didn't have Twitter in 19... 19- that would be why, uh, is because of the passing of Burt Reynolds. And again, rest in peace, Burt Reynolds, fantastic actor. Another social media trend. Oh, I gotta get a sip here. Oh, man. This one's floating around. Remember we talked about boycotting and out last week? Which was really a short-lived boycott. Uh, and I, you know, if, if you want to know how I feel about it, go back, go to the YouTube channel. We literally have the clip up on the YouTube channel. Uh, check it out and see how I feel about it, where really there wasn't much to boycott, and the boycott was very, very short-lived. Uh, but now we are looking at another trending hashtag boycott on Twitter and all the other social platforms, and that would be Boycott Nike. That's right. Boycott Nike. Nike, if you're not familiar with Nike, uh, you live under a rock. Like, literally, you've... <laughs> like Nike, the, the shoe, the footwear and apparel company. Uh, they are celebrating the 30th anniversary of their Just Do It slogan. They unveiled the Just Do It slogan 30 years ago this week. And in honor of that, they have a whole new ad campaign with a bunch of athletes. And one of those athletes happens to be Colin Kaepernick. That's right, Colin Kaepernick. And I'm not going to get into too much details and semantics. If you listen to the podcast, and you know simply based on our theme of common sense, that we are big supporters of Colin Kaepernick, uh, his his social injustice protests and the social injustice protests that continue uh, throughout the NFL. Big fans, proponents of that. Uh, remember, it's not an anthem protest. It's not unpatriotic. It's actually very patriotic. I digress. I can't get, like, we've, we've had full episodes talking about this. But nonetheless, he is now the face, one of the faces of this campaign. And of course, all the angry white men in the South lost their minds and decided they needed to start burning their Nikes. So, of course, the hashtag boycott Nike uh, thing started trending on all the social platforms. And people are losing their minds, and it's just crazy, and it's ridiculous. And and here, here's the important things to remember about this. First off, if you're one of those people out there that is boycotting Nike, is upset with Nike, whatever it might be, uh, you're probably not listening to this podcast. But if you are... Instead of burning your Nikes, I encourage you to donate them to a homeless shelter, to, to wherever, get them to someone in need. In fact, if you're really worried about disrespect to veterans, maybe donate all of your Nike gear to some needy veterans out there. That would probably be the best way to go. Uh, the other thing I want to unpack on this is everyone's like, Nike's going to lose so much money. They're going to lose so much money. And yes, their stock dipped a little bit the morning after this actually happened. Uh, but think about it. Think about it, wall fans, common sensors. There's two really important things to remember here. Nike knows what they've been doing. (laughs) They've been very successful for a very, 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 very long time. In fact, they have the largest share of footwear purchases in the entire world, I believe. I I know for sure within the United States they have the largest market share of footwear sales. They know what they're doing. They're not dumb. In fact, we can't even applaud them that much. Because, yes, they have come out in support of Colin Kaepernick and what he has been fighting for. Uh, however, we know that, really, they, they know they're going to get increased sales from many, many people. As much as there's a bunch of people out there burning their Nikes, Nikes that they have already purchased, by the way. So, Nike has your money. If you're one of those people that's, I'm going to burn these sneakers. Yeah, you already gave Nike your money. So, really, it, this does not hurt. it doesn't hurt Nike in the slightest bit. They've already got your money. They don't care what you do with their damn shoes. They, they don't. But they know exactly what they're doing, and they're going to end up making more money off of this in the end. And if, if you don't realize that, you need to really just think about it. They know exactly what they're doing. And the other thing is everyone's freaking out. Not freaking out, but a lot of people were posting on the social platforms about how Nike stock dipped and all this stuff. And I just want to remind everyone out there, when it comes to the stock market... The ups and downs of the stock market, yes, that can be affected by consumerism to an extent. But when we see something like this from Nike, where literally the next morning the stock dips, what that is, that's a bunch of wealthy white dudes out in New York who are trading a different way because they don't like Nike. That doesn't mean there's less people actually purchasing Nike. When it happens the day after, that's rich white dudes who are afraid of losing money and selling off their Nike stock. You don't believe me? Go do a little research on that because that's that's actually how it works. The stock market is not indicative entirely of the economy. 
It's indicative of wealthy white people economy. I always throw that around, wealthy white people. Wealthy anything. It's wealthy people economy. People that play the stock market and all this other stuff. I'm not talking about people that day play the stock market. I'm talking about people that just throw money around in the stock market. Yeah. So Nike's going to be fine. We're not boycotting Nike <laughs> by any means. Uh, and just because I applaud them for what they did. But knowing from the cynical side that uh, they did this, knowing they're going to, in the end, make more money. Because honestly... People that are purchasing Nikes and that kind of style of sneaker most likely are in support of Colin Kaepernick. Most likely they are in support of the racial and social injustice protests that are happening in the NFL. That's just the bottom line. And one more thing I'll leave you with. Everyone, a lot of people, because the ad campaign, uh, I don't have the exact words, but uh, it talks about sacrificing something. And, Colin, and everyone freaked out and they're like, Colin Kaepernick sacrificed nothing. He's a rich athlete with a bunch of money. And, and you know, he, he turned down teams and, and didn't play well enough and got benched. Here's the thing. Colin Kaepernick donated a bunch of his own hard-earned money uh, to worthy causes in this situation. And as far as sacrifice goes, if you're not aware of this out there, Colin Kaepernick gets death threats on an almost daily basis. That's what he's sacrificing. He, was, he sacrificed not having death threats on an almost daily basis. So, yeah... Did he go to war? Did he lose a limb? No. No one's trying to make that comparison. But don't say he sacrificed nothing. He sacrificed his NFL career, and he sacrificed arguably his safety in order to make his voice heard and to continue making his voice heard. So I don't want to hear that. He didn't sacrifice anything. Yeah, do you get death threats on a daily basis? No. No. I don't even get death threats on a daily basis. Usually the, the hate emails I get do not threaten death. They just call me an idiot. I've just kind of gotten used to that. I'm like, okay, yeah, man, yeah, I'm an idiot. That's why I talk to a wall every week and shoot dumb little videos and talk about beer and, you know, crappy punk rock. Right here on my shirt, crappy punk rock. Uh, those of you that are on the live feed are reading it backwards because Facebook is ridiculous. Ugh, and that's why we're moving to YouTube next week. Most likely, most likely. Uh, all right, and one more hashtag I want to leave you with. Hashtag I need you because you know this one could be a little heartwarming. Uh, but, oh, and it gets a little gross because there's people posting things and, you know, you can't, there's things you can't do to yourself that you need someone else to. And that's, I'll leave that at that. However, the one that made me laugh out loud, hashtag I need you because how else can I go up on the seesaw? That's right. You need two people for that. I need two people for the seesaw. Honestly, I don't know that I've ever been on a seesaw. I probably was never on a seesaw as a kid. I'm sure I was, uh. Doing a little drinking in high school and probably jumped on a seesaw at some point, but <laughs> I don't, didn't ride a lot of seesaws as a kid. I don't know why. I had a lot of friends. We just didn't have a lot of seesaws in our playgrounds, I guess. I don't know. Uh, all right, let's move on to some TV, film, and books as I get a nice little sip of my Luponic Distortion number 10. Mm. I'm enjoying this. Just the right amount of fruit for me. I was enjoying some of those hazy IPAs. And, and like, what happened was the hazy IPAs came out, like, got real popular, and they're, they're similar to the New England IPAs, and then all these craft breweries were like, oh my gosh, they like the juiciness, and so they're just like, pack all this juiciness in there, and like, like I'm like, okay, I, I don't want orange juice that tastes a little bit like beer, you know, I want, it. so I, I've moved a little bit away from the hazies, and this, this kind of hits right in that, that sweet spot of a little bit of fruitiness, but not, not crazy, hazy, juicy, you know? So they've been calling them. There's like juicy IPAs out there. It's like, whoa, calm down. Calm down. I guess there's a market for it. I, I don't know. I guess there's a market for it. Who knows? Nonetheless, TV, film, and books. Ooh. Roy Moore is back in the news. That's right. Roy Moore. If you're not familiar with him, go Google him and look him up. You should be familiar with him. Uh, he was an Alabama law, former Alabama lawmaker, uh, who really got into a lot of trouble because he is basically a pedophile. And... <laughs> arguably an admitted pedophile and he was also on Sasha Baron's show Sasha Baron Cohen's show uh, who is America well we have learned this week that he has brought up a lawsuit against Sasha Baron Cohen claiming he was defamed by the show who is America and if you have not seen the show let me fill you in a little bit on this particular episode he is uh, he's interviewing Roy Moore 
And if you're not familiar with the show, we've talked about it. Go back and listen. But he's obviously not playing Sasha Baron Cohen, and he's kind of punking. A little deep cut from <laughs> Ashton Kutcher, 1990s. A uh, little deep cut there. He's punking all of these politicians and, and people that he got to come on his show. And what he did with Roy Moore was he had this fake, obviously not real, fake pedophile detector. And as he pulled out the pedophile detector, it started to detect a pedophile in Roy Moore. And that is the main stipulation of Roy Moore's lawsuit against Sasha Baron Cohen, as well as CBS and Showtime. CBS owns the Showtime Network. That's where Who is America airs. And here's, here's the main thing with this. First of all, if you're that dumb that you think this pedophile detector exists, like, then I have no sympathy for you whatsoever. Uh, secondly, remember, arguably admitted pedophile. So, and this is a defamation lawsuit. He's saying he was defamed. So, admitting you're a pedophile and being a pedophile didn't defame you, but a completely ridiculous, off-the-wall show like Who is America with Sasha Baron Cohen, that defamed you? No, sir, Roy Moore. No, sir. That is not how it works. Uh, and, of course, Showtime was... was they, people reached out to Showtime uh, for their comment, and uh, the, Showtime actually said they don't comment on open litigations, but they also said that they have received none of the actual lawsuit paperwork that's been uh, kind of floating around the internet, and I'm pretty sure we're just looking at a ridiculous publicity stunt from Roy Moore, and this will probably get shot down completely, especially because Roy Moore signed a whole little release to say, yes, I will be on your show. Okay, that's how those things work, Roy Moore, and that's probably why you're no longer a politician. Uh, we got some news from Predator. That's right. The Predator reboot that's coming out very, 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 very soon. You've probably seen the ad campaigns, the commercials. It's all over YouTube and that good stuff. Uh, they actually got some news this week. They were just getting ready, just getting ready uh, to deliver the final cut because it is coming out soon. And the producers got word that one of the actors on the in the movie, in the film, uh, was is actually a registered sex offender. Now, he was in one scene in the film, one scene, he's actually a close friend with the director, his name is Steven Wilder Striegel, he was in one scene and that scene has now been cut, uh, and just to fill you in on this, we're not talking, you know, you always hear those jokes, and they are kind of funny, uh, you know, a, a guy really needed to go pee, and he go, like goes into a playground and, well, that's, a, you're actually technically, a, yes, and you know, and it's funny, we get it, no, we're not talking about that here. Uh, he is a registered sex offender because he was trying to coerce a 14-year-old girl into a relationship uh, over the web. And he got caught, and he actually pled guilty. Didn't even fight it because he's a disgusting, disgusting pedophile. And the director actually knew this and hired him anyway. Thank God for Olivia Munn, who pointed this out to the producers, and his scene has now been removed from the film. I don't know that I'll go see Predator, but may I don't know, maybe... I don't even think I've seen all the Predators. Was not really super into those those films myself. I don't think they're bad or anything. I just was never like super into the Predator films myself. So I don't know that I'll actually see this one. Uh, but if you do go see it, it's gonna be Sans the uh, the pedophile. We'll call it, like registered sex offender, but pedophile, fourteen year old girl. Uh, it will be Sans the scene with the pedophile in it. So that's always a good thing. Oh, we got some Oscars news. Oscars news. That's right. Oscars. Remember we talked about the Academy Awards, uh, gosh, I don't remember when it was, maybe a month or two ago. And they had added a new category. New category called Popular Film. And I pointed out this was basically a film category for Marvel movies, and Black Panther would likely win the first popular film Oscar. Would be nice if Deadpool 2 won it. Uh, but they have backtracked a little bit. The Academy has backtracked. The Academy of Film and Television, uh, they have postponed this new popular film category. And it's... Here's the thing. They didn't give exact reasons. They said they're going to continue the discussions on this popular film category, but, but it will not be in the 2019 Oscars, which would be the next Oscars that we're coming up on. It'll be happening in February. It will not be in there, and they're going to continue discussions, but I have a feeling we're not actually going to see this popular film category actually go into the Oscars uh, especially especially on the actual broadcast itself, just because there's been so much backlash. And this is one of those instances where an organization has seen enough backlash uh, that they're going to backtrack. You get the backlash, you backtrack. 
Backlash, backtrack, backlash, backtrack. See, I'm like Eminem up in here. Backlash, backtrack. We're going to get some Eminem. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we, we've seen the power of backlash and what that can do, and uh, we won't be seeing that popular film category uh, in 2019. I don't think we'll ever see it, but we definitely won't be seeing it anytime soon. Uh, but we'll continue to follow the story if this pops back up. You know how it is. We, we follow things. Things pop back up. We were talking about scary psycho clowns for a freaking year. Wow. Deep cut on Go Tell It to the Wall. Like the old, old fans are like, oh, I remember that. That was a big thing. That was a big thing on Go Tell It's a Wall podcast. Yeah, we talked a lot about it. All right, moving along. Ooh, Alex Jones. Alex Jones, that fat, bigoted son of a bitch. Back in the news, of course. He's just always in the news. I'm really hoping he's going to fade. Everyone needs to stop following him and retweeting his stuff. And oh, we'll get into that, actually. Because uh, you really can't retweet his stuff anymore. Uh, but he was all over the news yesterday because there was some congressional hearings happening in Washington, D.C. They actually had some Google executives there, some Facebook executives there. Jack from Twitter, that lion son of a bitch, too. He was up in there. Yeah, no. <laughs> Come on, Jack. It's time to resign from Twitter. Give it over to someone else, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But I want to talk about this thing first. So he's out on Capitol Hill and actually crashed a, a uh, Marco Rubio Marco Rubio news conference, not a big news conference, but one of those hallway news conferences, crashed it, started yelling at Marco Rubio as he's trying to give an interview. And, of course, a back and forth between Marco Rubio and Alex Jones ex ensued, uh, you know, because a meeting of the idiots, meeting of minds, meeting of idiots, that's what happens, and then they have a big back and forth uh, to the point where <laughs> Marco Rubio, and it's the only time in my entire life I was ever like, I was ever like, oh, okay, okay. Uh, but Marco Rubio actually turned to him and was like, who are you? I genuinely don't know who you are. And I don't know if he knows who he is, but that was that was the one funny thing. Uh, and then Marco Rubio went back to being Marco Rubio, said don't touch me. Uh, and in fact, because Alex Jones kind of reached out to like touch his shoulder. Uh, and in fact, Alex Jones said, are you going to call the police? And he said, no, I'll handle you myself. Yeah. Meeting of the idiots. Absolute meeting of the idiots. Oh my gosh, there we go. Having some trouble with the live feed there. Uh, and that that's what happened there. It's an absolute embarrassment. They are both em they're both embarrassments of human beings. Uh, but God, especially Alex Jones. It's just it's two morons yelling at each other. That's all it is. It's two morons yelling at each other. And then of course, what happens today after that happened yesterday with Alex Jones on Capitol Hill? Well, Twitter permanently and we're moving on to some tech here. Uh, Twitter permanently banned Alex Jones and InfoWars from their platform as of today. You will not be able to follow Alex Jones or InfoWars or any of those kind of things on Twitter because Jack finally put on his big boy pants and decided that Alex Jones and InfoWars should be kicked off of their platform since, you know, they spew lies and hatred and bigoted stories and get families of dead children threatened to the point where they have to move. Yeah, because, oh, they're, that's so subjective. Oh, no, they're clearly not by... Yeah, Jack. It's definitely time for Jack to to quit. To retire, give the reins over to someone else, because uh, you're really a terrible, terrible, terrible human being, Jack. And if you don't know the Jack that I'm referring to, this would be uh, the, the CEO of Twitter. He's on Twitter as at Jack. Let me just call him Jack. I don't even really give a shit what his last name is, because he's a terrible, terrible human being. Uh, just lies. Just lies. And you know, this is what's crazy. The reason he got kicked off Twitter today is because uh, he was approached by Alex Jones on Capitol Hill yesterday. And of course, that's what it took. He saw this loudmouth gas bag in front of him and said, Oh, oh, that's why people have been saying you should be banned from my platform. I don't know if we've talked about it, but Twitter actually wanted to ban him, and the CEO uh, stepped in and said, no, 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 we got to keep him on the platform. And why did they do that? Because they know that that was bringing people to Twitter, and it was helping their bottom line, when in the end, uh, you need to have integrity. And we had some integrity today, but too little, too late. And of course, a bunch of people came onto Twitter and started claiming, oh, this is a violation of free speech. And of course, we all know the Venn diagram of people, like, you know Venn diagrams where it crosses over a little bit? The Venn diagram of people claiming that Twitter has stifled Alex Jones' free speech. And then we also have the bubble of people that think Colin Kaepernick is terrible and that it's an anthem, anti, you know, unpatriotic protest and everything. It's not even a Venn diagram. Those two things are right on top of each other. Right? I mean, they are. They are. We know that. They are. Uh, so good on you, Twitter. 
Kind of. Too little too late, if you ask me. Facebook. Ooh, Facebook. Oh, they're always in the news. Always in the news. Oh, but we had a nice little, uh... We had a nice little survey. Oh, yeah. Nice little survey uh, from the Pew Research Center. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. I really hope that's how, that's why it was named, though. Pew, pew. Uh, the Pew Research Center actually did a survey, and they found that 53% of Facebook users do not understand the news feed. 53%. That's more than half. That's right. That's over 50%. That's more than half. 53%. And I found this interesting. You know what I found most interesting about this? Not that 53, not that so many, such a high percentage found it confusing, but I found it more interesting that 47% understand the news feed. Because I don't understand the news feed. Do you? Do you out there, wall fans, common sensors? Don't lie, because you don't understand it. Unless you work for Facebook, then maybe you have a slight grasp of understanding of it, but I don't understand it. So my takeaway from this is that 47%, what the hell do you think you understand? Because it does not make sense. I spend my I spend parts of my days trying to understand this stuff because it's what you do for a podcast and a channel. You gotta understand these things. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. So don't lie, 47% of people that were on this Pew Research Study, Pew Research Center survey. <laughs> I'm just mixing up words and everything. Bridget's not on the stream to keep me in line. I don't know what's happening here. Oh, and a little more Facebook news, actually. The Pew Research Center also did another survey that came out recently. This was a survey taken between May 29th and June 11th. And they found that almost half, almost half of millennials in this country, half of millennials surveyed by the Pew Research Center have deleted the Facebook app. Do not use Facebook whatsoever anymore. Uh, and to this one, I would say I'm not surprised at all. The younger crowd tends to shift over to Twitter Instagram, which is funny because if you deleted Facebook because you hate Facebook and you just use, you're like, I just use Instagram now. Yeah, Facebook owns Instagram. <laughs> just a fact. Uh, so really, you're not sticking it to Facebook. You're just using their other platform instead of using Facebook. <laughs> like they make money off of all of them. But I digress. <laughs> Millennials are leaving Facebook in droves, and it's just a matter of time. Uh, Facebook is dying a very, 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 very slow death. And I recommend this to all of you out there. I know I have a I have a website that I, you know, I have to pay money and, and have it look nice and, and get extra storage and do all this stuff with it. Uh, but really, if you want to shout into the void, uh, create yourself a nice free website. And that's, that's the way you can do it. You can put all of your stuff onto that actual website. You don't have to have a robust website like SeanWorkLive.com, uh, but you can, you know, that's the place to do it. And then no one else is controlling your stuff. I mean, Alex Jones and InfoWars still has a website. I know. It's amazing. It's probably hosted by Pornhub, but they still have a website. Hey, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, that's what I would recommend, because we're, we're like a year or two away from just Facebook being dead. Dead. The way of MySpace. Except I don't think anyone, people aren't, this isn't going to be like MySpace where they were paid a bunch of money to go away. This is going to be like, oh, our platform is just dead. Then Twitter's going next. I don't think Instagram's going anywhere. People love looking at photos. It's so easy when you just scroll through photo, 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 instead of like diatribes and all this other stuff and people retweeting the Orange Menace and all that good stuff. Oh, oh man. Oh man. This one I found interesting and terrifying at the same time. There's a company called Seismic. Seismic. This is, of course, a tech company. Uh, they have actually created robotic assisted, assistive powered clothing. I'll say that again. Robotic assisted, assist, see I can't even say it right, let me, robotic assistive powered clothing. That's right. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay, because I really didn't understand it either. But I did read up on it a little bit. Essentially what this is, is a slimmed down exoskeleton. If you're familiar with exo, like that's, and even nowadays with technology, you see it on people who are uh, 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 disabled, who need, you know, walkers or whatever else. They've created exoskeleton stuff for it so that they can get around. And what they've done now is this company Seismic has put this into clothing, specifically undergarments. And what it does is it's slimmed down exoskeleton and it helps with, you know, really aches and pains, any kind of that stuff, and, and works with your body while it's in your underwear. <laughs> works with your body to, to keep you moving around and, and all that good stuff. 
Uh, really, that's, that's as far as I could get into this. They are mainly targeting aging boomers. Aging boomers who, you know, could use a little extra support, which I get. I, you know, I wear Under Armour, uh, you know, not on day, I mean, I'm not wearing it right now. I, I sit in the studio, uh, in my underwear from, from the waist down. No, I don't. I'm actually wearing pants. But I do wear Under Armour when I'm working out and all that kind of, so I see the appeal. However, it's a little bit terrifying to have that much robotics, like, right next to my junk. So I will not be purchasing this, uh, regardless of how difficult it becomes for me to walk, just because that's a lot of electronics near my junk. And, on that same note, when it comes to robotics, we've actually learned something else new this week. There was a study. See, all, all these studies this week. What is happening? Uh, this one was actually done by uh, Cardiff University and MIT. It's a robotic study, and they found that robots, robots can learn prejudice. That's right, robots can learn prejudice. Uh, so, do you really want robotics right by your junk when they can learn prejudice and just decide, you know, at any second that you don't need stuff that is being supported by your underwear? Uh, and I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, we are all basically fucked. Just get ready to bow down to your robot overlords. Oh, God. I'm ready. I'm just, like, I'm hoping I can just be a little pet to one of the robot overlords and just, like, sit there. You know, like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm just, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we can hope for, right? I don't want to be in, like, the coal mines. we got the Orange Menace out here trying to revive the coal industry. I could end up in the coal mines. Robots throwing me out there. I don't even know where the hell there are coal mines. Probably not anywhere I want to be. Not anywhere I want to be. Uh, one more piece of news from tech. We've gotten some news. So many studies this week. UMass and Northeastern. UMass and Northeastern did a study, and they found throttling throttling from all of the major wireless carriers. That's right. We have talked about net neutrality and why net neutrality is important, and this is exactly why net neutrality is important. Uh, wireless carriers have been caught throttling, especially sites like net sites or apps like Netflix and YouTube. And the, I'm not going to get into exact numbers and details and everything else, but I will tell you, of the three big wireless carriers, the absolute worst of the three that they did studies on was Verizon. Yeah, can you hear me now, Verizon? Maybe stop throttling our stuff. I am actually a Verizon consumer. I've been for a very, very, very long time. Uh, next behind them was AT&T. They were the next worst and the best of the three, but still throttling, especially on you, uh, Netflix and YouTube was T-Mobile, which makes sense. T-Mobile is, uh, is a little better. You getting static on that end? It's the microphone. And it's me hitting the... Sometimes we get static on the live feed. Uh, so I, I'm not saying get off of Verizon, but beware. This is the kind of stuff we're looking at. And Verizon's already in a lot of hot water with their throttling with what they were doing with, uh, with firefighters fighting the wildfires up there in Northern California. Uh, so do better Verizon and really all three of you do better. Can absolutely do better. I'm thinking about switching to T-Mobile myself, actually. My wife and I have talked about this. They're a little cheaper than Verizon. They're not as good a coverage, but they're a little cheaper. I might be a, might be a T-Mobile user here soon. Oh, we got some music news. Music news. Now, part of the reason why I'm wearing my fancy Blink-182 Crappy Punk Rock t-shirt this week uh, it's really not good news from Blink-182, it's uh, some unfortunate bad news, but it will get better. Uh, and it's not really not anything new, we kind of knew this was going to happen because they've been having some problems. They had announced a mini tour. A mini tour and then they were doing some other stops, they were actually doing a performance uh, up here in Ventura uh, for a big surf competition up there. Uh, they've had to cancel that tour, uh, they've had to cancel those other appearances, uh, and they've, they've postponed more of their Vegas residencies from what I can understand. And this is, of course, because Travis Barker's health is still, I don't want to say failing, it's still not back to 100%. So doctors, again, have not cleared him to, to pl actually play drums to go on tour uh, and, and perform with Blink-182. So unfortunately, uh, those shows are missed. <laughs> Fortunately for me, none of those were Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, the Ventura one was kind of close, but it wasn't part of the little mini tour they announced. Uh, but I know they're absolutely going to be back. They're very confident they're going to be back. And I, I just hopefully we, we can send our, our most positive thoughts to Travis Barker. Uh, because first and foremost, we want him to, to be healthy, to be better. He has children. 
He wanted to be healthy for his children. Uh, and then after that, to, to just get back to 100% and get back out there and, and, and keep drumming with Blink-182, keep drumming with all your other bands, man, because my, my favorite drummer really of all time is Travis Barker. I know a lot of people argue with me on that, but uh, but it's one of my probably my favorite drummer of all time. Uh, so all positive thoughts for Blink and for Travis Barker and, and hope to see them back at it very, very, very soon. Hopefully sooner than later because that means Travis's health is, uh, is much better. Uh, a little more music news. Eminem. Eminem dropped a new album just out of nowhere. No pre-promotion, no anything else. Just new album. Boom! Next morning you woke up and it was like a few days ago. Boom! Maybe it was a week ago. Next morning you wake up. The Eminem album! What? 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 Now, I haven't listened to a lot of it. It's had super, super mixed reviews. A lot of people have really been getting on him about it. Uh, and apparently it has a lot of diss tracks. If you're not familiar with diss tracks, that's, that's kind of the thing in hip-hop. Is, is, you know, diss being insult. And I think a lot of times it's good-natured, but it's just the back and forth. And, you know, this guy records a song and he's like, You stink! And this guy records a song and he's like, You stink more! That's what I think when I hear diss tracks. I don't know. Uh, I did hear one song. This is this is my mistake. I did want to hear it. He, he has a, a a song out called Fall, which I really enjoy. It's Eminem. It's 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 Slim Shady. It's not the, like the first Eminem album, but it's it's a little Slim Shady. But it's Eminem. It's a great song. I don't understand uh, some of the rappers that he's mentioning because I'm like, what's Amigos? I don't even know what Amigos is. It sounds like a car or like a little scooter that you'd get in Italy. Amigos. Migos, and you have to make the sound when you ride the scooter. That's that's what they do, right? I don't have a scooter myself, but I assume you have to. Migos. I don't know. I don't know what Migos is. I don't know what some of that stuff is. Uh, but of course, what happened was I watched this one video on YouTube, and I go on YouTube today, and they're like all of this. There's some guy named Machine Gun Kelly or Machine Gun Connor or Machine something. I don't know. Who knows? I you know I'm so out of. The, I'm I'm a little old when it comes to that stuff. Crappy punk rock, I'm all about it. I'm a little old when it comes to hip hop. I don't even want to call it old. I just, I don't, I don't get all that stuff. I can't keep track. And then it was like, here's an Eminem diss track. It's like, oh my god, no, no, just please get off of my YouTube. I just wanted to watch one video and see how it was. Uh, so check out Eminem if you're an Eminem fan. New album, a whole bunch of videos up on YouTube. You can check out all the other hip hop artists and rappers that are insulting him back. Who cares? I don't know. Oh, oh. All right, let's move on to some sports. Man, we are getting short on time, but luckily, I think I freaking timed it out well this week. That never happens, but let's get into some sports. Mm. NFL season starts tonight. The NFL season actually kicked off with a little bit of a weather delay for lightning. Kicked off tonight. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons are currently playing. I will be watching none of it because I have no interest in the National Football League this year. However, I feel the need to bring it up uh, and prepare for lots of back and forth on these racial and social injustice protests. And of course, prepare yourself for the Orange Menace to tweet more and become even more unhinged than usual. Uh, I will say, it appears that, no, because I did specifically watch the pregame, the very beginning of the game, it would appear that nobody from either team actually kneeled on the field Kneeled on the field, uh, there was one person, uh, Michael Bennett, uh, who stood for part of the anthem and then sat down on the bench before the anthem was done. I don't know if that was him speaking his mind. He has previously raised a fist uh, in protest during the anthem uh, in protest of racial and social injustice. And Ford, we talked about Nike at the top of the podcast, somewhat top of the podcast. Ford, Ford Motor Company. They actually came out today, uh, maybe today, this week, uh, in support of the racial and social injustice protests. That's right, in support of. They, they support the players' right to protest during the national anthem. And you know what's crazy about this? Ford Motor Company is a huge sponsor of the National Football League, much like Nike. All those jerseys that those football players are wearing... This year, that's what's funny about all these people burning their Nikes. I hope they also burned their football jerseys because they have a little Nike swoosh on it. Ford is also a very, very, very big sponsor of the National Football League. And in fact, in addition to that, the Ford family owns the Detroit Lions. They own the Detroit Lions. Martha Ford owns the Detroit Lions. That's right. And they've come out in support of the racial and social injustice protests saying it is the players' right to do so and they will continue to support them. They respect that right. Now, 
I'm happy to hear this. I'm also happy to hear this because I'm hoping to see a bunch of Ford F-150 trucks being lit on fire because, you know, all those people in the South were lighting their Nikes on fire. If you're going to be consistent, white bigoted jackasses, make sure you're also lighting your truck on fire. If it's a Ford, Ford is in support of this. Uh... But seriously, if you are going to light your truck on fire, make sure you do it safely. It's probably no safe way to light a car on fire. I can't imagine there's a safe way to light a car on fire. Uh, but this is going to be interesting to see if a bunch of people start lighting their trucks on fire. Or did we find, like, did we hit a point where they're like, God damn, I can't afford to buy a new pair of $10 shoes from Walmart. I can't afford to buy a new truck. That's what's happening right now. Can't do a southern accent. It just sounds like, uh... Like I'm on King of the Hill or something, I don't know. One more piece of sporting news, I found this one enjoyable. The U.S. Open is happening right now in New York. Uh, the U.S. Open is a tennis tournament. It's a very, very, one of the major uh, tennis tournaments. When, you know, you talk about, when you hear that term, with golf and tennis majors, those are like the big, the big tournaments. You have these little tournaments, these big tournaments. The U.S. Open is happening in New York right now. All the pros out there and some news that came out today. I believe this actually happened... Uh, yesterday, but it was hitting the news a lot today. They've had a heat wave in the Northeast, uh, specifically in New York. And they actually, before the U.S. Open started, they had built in new uh, extra heat, like heat breaks to make sure that athletes and such were not being, uh, not getting overheated. I actually have another piece of sports, sports news. Uh, making sure they weren't getting overheated. And what happened was, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic was, was in a match against uh, Millman. The guy's last name is Millman, John Millman. And what happened was the official stopped it partway through, uh, not for an official break or any of that kind of stuff, but he stopped the match and actually told John Millman to take some time to go in and change his clothes because his clothes were literally dripping in sweat. And it was not safe to play, it was not safe for anyone, and he had to go in and change his clothes. Uh, Djokovic, who happens to be one, like probably ranked number one right now, usually he's in the one-two range. Uh, Novak Djokovic, probably ranked number one. He took advantage of the break and you know sat there and and John Millman went in and changed because he was entirely too sweaty and his clothes were soaking wet. And I laugh because I can really relate. Uh, I break into a sweat just walking. I do, and it's not a health thing. I'm just I'm just one of those sweaters. Like sweaters, I'm <laughs> not a sweater that you wear. Uh, I just sweat heavily. This is something I've dealt with for a very, very, very long time. Especially when I was doing triathlons, uh, it was it was just such a thing that I had to be aware of and just constantly. And, and because I sweat so much and lose salt so much, which is probably important for the John Millman, you lose, you lose a lot of sweat, uh, salt through sweat, uh, is is making sure you're hydrated with the proper stuff. So like Gatorade or something that actually has sodium in it. Uh, so I feel for you, John Millman. And uh, I'm, I don't know that he actually won that match because Novak Djokovic is like the greatest male tennis player in the world right now. Uh, but I don't, know. I don't know. I don't follow tennis enough. Not because, like, mad respect to tennis players. I just, I don't, it's not something I watch. Uh, here is something I do watch, and that would be baseball, specifically the ma Major League Baseball. There's a player for the New York Mets named Todd Frazier. Todd Frazier was playing in the field this past weekend at Dodger Stadium, actually, here in Los Angeles. Playing at Dodger Stadium. And if you're familiar with baseball, someone hit a foul ball, and he ran over to the stands, and this is, you know, players can actually reach into the stands and try to catch a foul ball, and then it's going to be an out. Well, what he did was he reached into the stands, and the ball actually dropped out of his glove. You've got to hold the ball through the whole thing. What happened was he looked down and saw a rubber play ball. Oh, man. Convenient. Not on purpose. Similar to this ball. Probably not as ridiculous as this one. And what he did was held it in his glove, pulled it out, showed it to the umpire, I am, I got the ball on the umpire, called him out. Well, we go to find out. Like I said, he picked up this rubber ball. Shouldn't have been an out. And in fact, uh, today, just today, he admitted that he pulled one over on the umpires, didn't actually have the ball. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how I feel about this, but he got away with it. He got away with it. There's all kinds of trickery and stuff like that. I mean, there's, uh, you have like hidden ball tricks and stuff in baseball. I appreciate it. I think it's funny. Uh, if, you know, if this was like the playoffs of the World Series or something, that would be a whole other thing. And the Dodgers do happen to be locked in a very, very, very tight division race. Uh, although I believe they ended up winning that game. So in the end, inconsequential. Inconsequential. All right, let's move on to some common sense. We've got about six minutes left here. 
Common sense. Cory Booker. Cory Booker, who is a politician, Democratic politician from New Jersey. You've seen this guy. He's African American. Uh, he's bald. I believe he's bald. I'm trying to remember. I, you see, you've seen him. Uh, he's pretty much bald. You know, um, I don't think he's. He just shaves it bald. Uh, from New Jersey. You've seen him on stuff quite a bit because he pushes back on a lot of people. Pushes back in a common sense kind of way. I've always enjoyed seeing uh, videos of him. Uh, on Capitol Hill and, and the way he, he puts things forward. Uh, what happened today was they're doing the judiciary hearing for uh, for Judge Kavanaugh, trying to get him confirmed to the Supreme Court. I'm not going to get into semantics on this. Uh, and just this morning, Cory Booker threatened to release confidential documents to the public. Confidential documents to the public because there's this whole back and forth. And again, I don't want to get into details on it. Uh, with the GOP withholding, Republicans withholding certain documents, and some of those had been revealed to the other side of the aisle, and Cory Booker had threatened to release those documents. And then, in fact, did release those documents to the public. What happened was, we don't know the exact timeline here, but the GOP, of course, also released those documents to the public, uh, making them not confidential anymore. Depending where you sit on this, I don't know for sure. I haven't done enough research. It's more of a good on you, Cory Booker. Uh, but I would say I'm sure the Republicans got some pressure from the Democrats because there's been a lot of back and forth on this. I know they've been getting a, lot, getting a lot of phone calls. You see phone numbers floating around social platforms. They got a lot of pressure on this, and they had to just actually release them because of the pressure. So like I said, good on you, Cory Booker. Uh, but please, please, please get back to work. And if all of this was just grandstanding, then it, it's meaningless. It's meaningless unless you actually effect difference, effect change here uh, for the Judiciary Committee hearings. So let's see what happens there. Oh, my good buddy, Cousin Beto. Oh, Cousin Beto. I'm going to call him Cousin Beto from now on. Cousin Beto, he's in the news today. He's in the news every day because he's just such a fantastic human being, very attractive, very personable, fantastic views on life and politics. But he was in the news, uh, I think it was yesterday, actually, that this broke. So apparently, some texts were sent from the Beto O'Rourke campaign. You know, they maintain these text lists, so they have phone numbers. It's all, and it's all done through, like, a computer. <laughs> There's not, like, an intern sitting there, like, oh, my God, texting. You know, it's all done through a computer, and it sends out mass text to its supporters. People have signed up to get these texts. Uh, well, some weird text messages came out uh, this week. Weird one. And, in fact, one of the text messages said, and I quote, we are in search of volunteers to help transport undocumented immigrants to polling booths so that they will be able to vote. Unquote. Yeah, yeah. And of course there was some pushback. People were like, what is this? This is terrible. And of course there were some Republicans and some Republican supporters that were like, see? Cousin Beto is terrible. Cousin Beto. Beto O'Rourke is terrible. Look at what he's trying to do. We go to find out that there was... Someone went a little rogue with the text messaging system and sent this out. Could it have been a Russian spy? I don't know. Based on the landscape? Probably. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, is if you're going to do this and you're doing it really to sabotage Beto O'Rourke's campaign, don't be that ridiculous. Like, don't be that ridiculous. Because here, bottom line, is even if Beto and his campaign team thought this, thought that they needed to get undocumented immigrants to go to polling places, do you really think that they would be texting it out as a mass text? It's so off the wall. It's so ridiculous that clearly somebody got a hold of this and sent out some fake texts. I mean, like, common sense. Common sense says fake, 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 fake. Like, be a little more subtle. If you're really trying to sabotage the campaign, be a little more subtle. We all know this was somebody got a hold of it. Completely fake. Someone went rogue, and it's ridiculous. Oh, speaking of Russia... Uh-huh, yeah. Domino's Pizza in Russia decided to run a little promotion. This was supposed to be like a two-month-long promotion starting in August. And the promotion was they were offering free pizzas for life to any customers who got a tattoo of their logo. Any customer who got a tattoo of their logo was going to get free pizzas for life, specifically free pizzas for 100 years. Now, if you're getting a tattoo and it's 100 years, you're looking at being like 120. You're probably not eating pizza at 120. So, yes, it's a lifetime of pizza. Lifetime of pizza. 
Well, what happened was Domino's did not realize that many of their fans do not give a shit about their body. And the fa well, and here's the thing too is honestly, the Domino's logo is not that weird. Like it's it's a domino. It's a little red and blue domino. Like it's not that weird. You just get a little domino anywhere on your body. And what happened was people were getting these domino tattoos and then posting them on social media. And, of course, they were entitled to free pizza for 100 years. Uh, and, of course, Domino's realized this was getting a little bit out of hand. So they discontinued the promotion completely. And they announced that they would only be awarding free pizza for life to the first 350 people with tattoos. Domino's. I don't care if it's Russia or not. Get a new marketing team because Common Sense says, like, here's the thing. Pizza, pizza ain't cheap. Like, and I don't think there was a stipulation on how much pizza. So can you imagine, like, the poor college kid at 20 who's like, I have a bunch of tattoos. I just have to get a little domino on my arm. <laughs> Sold. Sold. We're good. Free pizza for life. That's right. It's, it's amazing. Fix your marketing team over there. All right, we got one more little piece of common sense. This isn't even really common sensey. I just enjoyed this very much, and I got a little more information myself. And this would be the growing popularity of the stovepipe cans. Stovepipe cans, which I knew these were growing in popularity. I didn't know the term stovepipe cans. For those of you that aren't familiar with this term, uh, much like I wasn't until today, the stovepipe cans are the 19.2 ounce cans. If you've seen them, they're in the grocery stores. Sprouts has them. They're at liquor stores, craft beer stores, all that good stuff. Uh, they're actually the same diameter same diameter as a 12 ounce can or a 16 ounce can, a pint can, uh, but they are about as tall as a 22 ounce tall can. So slimmer than a tall can and taller than your typical 12 ounce or your pint cans. Uh, I really love these and in fact I've done, I've done a little bit of math, just a little bit of math. Uh, the math works out really well on these for those of you out there that have not been picking up these cans. A lot of the craft breweries do them and they do them for about $1.75 to do $2 for a can, which is not quite two beers. It's a little more than a pint, but do the math on it. In fact, I pick these up now and then uh, for uh, from Oscar Blues Brewery. They do their Dale's Pale Ale in these 19.2 ounce cans. I know I'm bringing it up because I love them. They are fantastic. They're, they're just as good as tall cans, except they're a little slimmer, so they're a little nicer to hold, uh, and it's really just the right amount. And apparently they are called stovepipe cans. And we're seeing more and more of them from craft breweries. Uh, and the other good thing about this is, like when I was in younger, when I was in younger, when I was younger and in college and stuff, if I was going to a party, uh, you know, and this is when you're younger, like it's a bring your own beer type things. I would go out and get like, a, you know, 40 or a couple of 40s and bring it. Like these are the way to go. Grab a couple of these cans at the gas station on your way to a party, you know, where you're just hanging out drinking some beer pool party or whatever, and there you go. You got some of these nice 19.2 ounce cans, so I'm hoping that these will continue gaining in popularity. And I know they will, because I'm seeing them pop up more and more around Highland Park, and I've even fact, I, I, in fact, I've talked to a couple of uh, people that work at the beer stores around here, and they've even mentioned it, like, oh yeah, love the 19.2s, and, and, you know, when a new brewery starts doing them, they're like, yeah, we just got the... Uh, from that brewery, 19.2 ounce cans. I know Green Flash was doing them for a while. Lagunitas does them like crazy. You can get some of that Sumpin' Easy Ale. Well, that Sumpin' Easy Ale in a, in a stovepipe can is the way to go. That's the way to go. Ah, so on that note, see, I'll leave you with, you know, some happy beer news. Popularity of cans on that note. Uh, and I will say, if you're watching the live feed and you didn't check the teaser, uh, check out the teaser because I kind of unveiled, our, you know, kind of our new theme song. Produced. We'll get into more of that. It's going to be used more. I, I like just got it this week, and I just wanted to tease it a little bit on the teaser because we tease things on the teaser. So remember that. Uh, so check that out if you haven't already heard it because it's pretty awesome. I'm enjoying it. We're going to be you're going to be hearing much, 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 much more of that. Uh, so look forward to that. And of course, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Tell the Wall Pod at Magic Muppet, and on Facebook, like our page, Facebook.com/slash Go Tell It to the Wall, and of course YouTube. Head on over to YouTube.com, search Go Tell It to Wall, subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, comment, like, dislike, do all the things. And if you can't find any of those things I just mentioned, just remember SeanO'RourkeLive.com will link you to all of those things I just mentioned as well as give you access to some other things that you're not going to find anywhere else, anywhere else except SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Uh, so head on over there, bookmark, check back often, do all of the things. 
This has been episode 70 of Go Tells the Wall podcast. I am your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. We will be back next week. Same wall place, same wall time. And until then, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, social media world, remember, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter who you're with, no matter why you are doing it, always, always use common sense. Ooh. All right, social media world, thank you for joining the live feed. Thank you for checking out episode 70 of Go Tells the Wall podcast. As always, I appreciate you all being here, whether you're watching live, watching after the fact, watching on Facebook, watching on YouTube, listening to that madness, whatever it might be, I do appreciate all of you. We've got some new big things coming. I mentioned that theme song, if you watch the teaser. New big things coming. We're working on a lot of great, exciting things outside of even just that theme song. Uh, so, so look forward to those over the next couple weeks. Uh, really over the next couple months because it's everything's building. We'll have new announcements really coming like every week or so. So look forward to that. Make sure you tune in next week. Same wall place, same wall time for episode 71 of Go Tell to Wall podcast. Uh, as always, I'm your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And remember, if you got some complaints... You got nothing to do but tell it to a wall. And never forget the patented Bridget Freeze.